I had an idea to start that back in uh, probably the late 1990s and uh, my inspiration was Myron Lee who was a good friend of mine and Myron is of course the uh, all-time great rock and roll performer to come out of South Dakota. I felt that we needed some type of of way of, of recognizing the artists that have performed music, uh, not only the bands, but the ballrooms, the radio stations, the disc jockeys. And so I formed the Hall of Fame, I put together a board of directors, and the first year we just organized and we had our first induction in 2009. We inducted, I think, about six or seven bands from South Dakota plus a couple from surrounding states. Uh, one of our uh, first inductees was uh, Bobby V from North Dakota, who was our out-of-state inductee, and, and Bobby had a big influence on music in South Dakota since he was right across the border and uh, in the early years and throughout the years performed uh, around South Dakota. So uh, that was our first year, and this will be our fourth induction, and we've had a sold-out uh, induction concert each year. Well, uh, local names, of course, Myron Lee and the Caddies, uh, Sherwin Linton, who initially played rock and roll. Uh, we inducted Gary Owens from Mitchell, who was on Laugh-In, and Gary was a, uh, a disc jockey in Mitchell. That's how he got his start. Uh, Gary Mule Deer is another inductee, and, and Gary initially had a band out of Spearfish called uh, uh, Gary uh, Miller and the Bequeros. And of course, Gary went on to uh, fame as a, as a comedian. And those are probably uh, some of the most recognizable people that, that we've inducted from South Dakota. Yes, so there were a lot of bands that really had some, uh, had some, some great sounds and some records. Uh, there was a Native American group out of here called the Burns Boys, and uh, they weren't real familiar in Sioux Falls, but they played in central South Dakota. They went on to tour the country and played all over all over the West Coast. Uh, they were very well-known people. Uh, the Mystics out of Aberdeen, they did uh, maybe a half a dozen records. Uh, DJ and the Cats had a couple of records. Uh, Dale Gregory and the Shouters, uh, the Bleach Boys, which was a takeoff in the name Beach Boys. Uh, they were from Sioux Falls, they had a big hit. Uh, the Trippers, uh, you know, I can go on and on. There were just a lot of really good groups. Uh, Marlis Rowe and the Talesman, another very good group that uh, had several records. We have a good variety of, of displays here. We have a lot of photos of bands. Uh, we have uh, musical instruments, in, including the drum set of Mark Cranny, who is probably the best known drummer to ever come out of South Dakota. And unfortunately, Mark died uh, a number of years ago at, at a very young age. But we have his drum set in here. We have a vintage jukebox. We have uh, probably a half a dozen guitars that belong to different musicians. Uh, we have some saxophones, we have some old band jackets, we have a lot of posters, uh, some dating back to the 50s, and uh, just a variety of other items here too that uh, pertain to, to the rock and roll era in South Dakota. Well, you know, initially, Scott, we were concerned that uh, we would have enough people to, to fill the chairs the first year. We had our first year induction at the Arcota which is now the Shrine Mosque, uh, that was sold out. We moved to the exhibit hall at the Ramcota, and that sold out uh, all three years. So it seems like it gets stronger each year with uh, more interest and uh, people love the nostalgia. They love to look back and, and uh, see times that, have, uh, that are no longer here and they can relive those on the night we have our induction concert. Yes, uh, what we're doing is we started inducting bands from the 50s, we're now in the 60s and we're moving into the 70s. So each year we'll be adding bands from, uh, from the next uh, era. So eventually we'll have bands right up to the, the present time. And there are so many bands in the 60s, we've, we've taken a couple of years just to, to induct those bands and we'd like to get those people on stage while they're still able to play. And we have a lot of 70s bands on the horizon that will be, be coming on board here in the, now in the near future. Everything we've had, all of our feedback has been very positive. Uh, it's especially popular for people that can reminisce. They look at photos and they say, oh, I was in that ballroom, or that's where I met my wife, or my cousin was in that band, or 
I remember seeing them play, so I think that's a big part of it. And uh, the other part of it is we get a lot of uh, school groups come through here and, and these kids get an opportunity to, to see uh, what it was like years ago, and not only the instruments, but what the bands look like and the ballrooms. And so it's, it's kind of a learning experience as well as a, a nostalgia trip. We appreciate the support of all the people that have come to our concerts and inductions. Uh, we, we get about 1,400 people there each year and we have uh, a waiting list of two or 300 people that want tickets. And each year it's more and more popular. So I really appreciate the support and the interest from all the people in the state and the surrounding states. And it's, it's proven to be a successful venture for all of us.